Okay, so we know the motion graph for subharmonic motion is sinusoidal, but how do we find the displacement at some particular time, or even the velocity and the acceleration? Okay, so it turns out there are equations for this. So the displacement can be given by this equation here. X is the displacement at some particular point in time p, and that's measured in meters. So that's the distance and direction. And then you've got amplitude, which is the largest displacement, also measured in meters, cosine of omega t. So omega is angular speed or angular frequency measured in radians per second, and time is measured in seconds here. So the largest value that this cosine can take is 1. Or in fact, any trigonometric function, the biggest value you can have is 1. So that is why the number in front of it is the amplitude, okay, is the, the biggest displacement you can have. And you can sketch that on the graph, or you can just read off the graph by looking at the largest value on the y-axis there. Okay, next to note is angular uh, frequency, which can be measured just using this equation here, or determined using the time period. And the time period, you can just read off the graph here. It's a time taken for one complete oscillation. Or you can measure a number of oscillations and divide that by the number of oscillations to find the time taken for one oscillation. Okay. The, another important thing to note here is that if you do angular fre speed frequency, which is in radians per second, times seconds, if you multiply those together, the second cancels out. So your argument here will be in radians. So the number that goes inside here is in radians. So that means you need to set your calculator on radian mode. Otherwise, you'll get the wrong answer. So always check that before you do a question like this. So it turns out there's equations of velocity as well. And it looks a bit like the displacement one, except instead of a cosine, now you've got a sine. That's because you differentiate, you found the gradient of it. And also it turns out when you find the gradient of it and you differentiate, you get an extra omega coming out the front like this. Okay, so the number at the front is very important to remember, omega a. The reason for that is because the largest value this can be is one. So the number at the front is the maximum speed, v max. Okay, so that's worth remembering. Okay, and you can also just read this from the graph. So if you look at the graph, you just look at these numbers over there, omega a, so that will give you omega and a multiplied together, and that could be useful. Keeping in mind, you should set your calculator on radio mode when using this equation. Okay, so there's an equation for acceleration as well. It looks like this. Now, instead of sine or cosine, it's minus cosine right now. Okay, and also because we differentiated it or found the gradient twice from the displacement graph, two sets of omegas coming up, so it becomes omega squared. And again, the biggest value cosine can take is one. So the number at the front, one times that number, gives basically, it's gonna be that number, is the maximum acceleration. And that's worth remembering. Okay, and you can also just read this from the graph like this. So the biggest value from the graph on the y-axis is omega squared a. Okay, and keeping in mind, you should also just use radial mode when using this equation. Okay, we've got a 0.20 kilogram mass, so that's m, on a spring and is displaced upward by 5.0 centimeters at time t equals zero is released from rest. So if you're displacing a mass and then releasing it from rest, that is going to be your amplitude, okay, the 5.0 centimeters, because it's never going to go over beyond that displacement. So that's your biggest displacement. Okay, the mass oscillates with a time period of 4.0 seconds. Calculate the displacement of the mass at time t equals 9.4 seconds. So you want the displacement x at some particular point in time t. Okay, so you can use this equation. We know the amplitude. It's uh, in meters, it's 0 0.05 times cosine of omega. Well, what's omega? Well, we've got the time period. So we can just use this equation. 2 pi divided by a time period, which is 4 seconds, gives us the omega, the angular speed, in radians per second. That reminds us to put our calculator on radian modes. Okay, so you get a cosine of 1.57 times the time, which is 9.4 seconds, and that gives us minus 0.03 meters as a displacement. It's negative because that means it's gone below the equilibrium. So we displaced the upwards in the positive direction, but now it's actually below at this point in time. Okay, part B here we're asked to calculate the maximum restoring force on the mass. Well, we can determine the force by determined acceleration. So we could use this equation, but actually we're looking for the maximum. Uh, acceleration first. So we don't have to worry about the cosine omega t. That's just going to equal 1 at maximum. So we've got the equation for maximum, which is omega squared a. Maximum acceleration here. Yeah. Omega we know from the previous part, 1.57 seconds. We use the time period to find that. So let's put this in. So we've got the angular speed um, squared, don't forget squared, times the displacement, maximum displacement, 0 0.05, and that gives us the acceleration. And then now we've got the maximum acceleration. We just have to multiply by the mass, which is 0 0.2 
zero kilograms, and that gives us the maximum force. Okay, the graph shows how the velocity of a buoy varies with time. Calculate the maximum displacement of the buoy from the equilibrium. The maximum displacement from the equilibrium, that is the amplitude. We're looking for capital A here. What information do we have in this graph? First, we've got the time period, time taken for one complete cycle. And then we've also got the maximum speed, or Vmax, from 0 0.80 uh, meters per second. So that also, we know that that's equal to omega A. Okay. So we can use that to find A. We will need Vmax and omega. So we know Vmax is 0 0.8. So how do we get omega? Well, you can use 2 pi over t. So if we do that, we get 3.14 radians per second as our omega. So let's put this into the equation. So Vmax is 0 0.80 and omega is 3.14. Rearrange that and we get the amplitude, the maximum displacement as 0 0.25 meters. There's another way I could have done this. It's a bit harder, but I couldn't realize that the area under a velocity time graph is equal to displacement. So I could have just found the area above the graph here to get my maximum displacement. In part B here, we're asked to calculate the maximum acceleration. We already know quite a lot of information from the previous part. We know Vmax, we know time period omega and amplitude here as well. So we need to realize maximum acceleration comes from this equation here, from the coefficient. So maximum acceleration is omega squared a. Okay, so omega we know is 3.14, so 3.14 squared times the amplitude, which we just calculated in the last section, 0 0.25, and that gives us a maximum acceleration of 2.5 meters per second squared. There's another way we could have done this question, which is realizing that in a velocity time graph, the gradient is equal to acceleration. So if we want the maximum acceleration, we'll need to find the steepest gradient on this graph. So I'll draw a tangent here. That's where it's the most steepest. And then I'll find the gradient of that tangent to get the maximum acceleration. Okay, the equation below gives the acceleration of a specific simple harmonic oscillator with time. Determine the time period and amplitude of oscillation. So this one is for a particular uh, simple harmonic oscillator, but we can write the general equation for a simple harmonic oscillator for acceleration it looks like this. Even though it's sine and cosine, we can still make direct comparison. The reason why it's kind of sine and cosine is because maybe this oscillator was pushed from the equilibrium rather than being released from rest at the uh, from the amplitude. Okay, but the the coefficient is still going to be the same. So the eight here is omega squared a. Okay, so let's write that down. And this uh, thing that's multiplying the t is the omega, which is 0 0.63. So we can write that down as well. So finding the time period is pretty straightforward because we know omega is equal to 2 pi over t. So rearranging this, we get a time period of 10 seconds. Okay, we've got omega. So that means find the amplitude is pretty straightforward as well. We just have to rearrange this. Okay, and then that gives us an amplitude of 2 meters. 